Okay guys, it's another Ford Taurus with a lean condition. Uh, wonder what it is. It's either gonna be a vacuum leak or a dirty mass airflow sensor, maybe a fuel pressure problem. My money's on a vacuum leak. If you look at the fault codes next to me here, you'll see we have the P0171 and 174 faults. That's bank one and bank two. But then the other one that leaves a question mark in this whole process is the the rich code on the bank two sensor one. So when you have a lean exhaust fault accompanied with a rich code, that makes you really suspect an oxygen sensor problem as well. So it looks like we have multiple problems on this one. Let's do our typical fuel trim numbers at idle and then uh, at a higher RPM and let's see what direction this goes in. Well, you know the tough part about filming sometimes with you guys? the sun you know if I put my head back here you can't see me if I'm talking to you I come up here you can but I'm blind uh, I need a cameraman all right let me put this scan tool data next to me again and uh, I went that way nope opposite it's gonna be there <laughs> all right so again taking a look at this p2198 fault o2 sensor stuck rich bank two sensor one accompanied with a lean code on that same bank that's suggesting an o2 sensor problem uh, it could be some other things too head gaskets uh, o2 contamination uh, i'm trying to think of what else when i've seen rich and lean codes at the same time from an o2 i mean it's almost always a faulty o2 so let's exit out of here and let's look at our freeze frame data first just to get an idea of our engine load and speed when these fault codes set let's see what's in here p0174 is the only freeze frame data fault that's right here the top right of the screen and what i'm looking for is engine speed there we go we're 1500 rpm uh, what is my engine temperature too? I really want to know that. Take air is 39 degrees. Coolant temp is 176. So we're um, not fully warmed up, but but getting there. Uh, and what that tells me, guys, is is uh, sometimes these lean faults you can only identify when the uh, car is cold. So uh, an intake manifold gasket leak, for example when the engine warms up the intake expands the engine expands seals the leak and so that's going to be a lean condition that you may only be able to identify when the engine's cold i have a few videos i've done that on i'll put some links in the description of this one for you guys you can watch that uh, but what this tells me at 176 degrees is i don't really need to worry about that part i can go ahead and start the car and run it and look at my numbers we see my long terms are at 25 and 24.2 percent on the screen it's on the left hand column short terms are uh, relatively in a normal range but i can clearly see at 1500 rpm at 176 degrees that my long term trims are both positive both banks and then my calculated load is 25 percent and we'll start the car and compare what that is here in a second. It looks like this is a low speed lean condition. And so this is pointing toward a vacuum leak is what that means. Let's pull up that calculated load data now. Under the generic functions, they don't give me my data. So I have to exit the vehicle, which is a little annoying. And then enter this as a global just so I can get that same data PID for you guys, the calculated load number. I, I just want to see what it is at idle. There's your calculated load value right there. So I'm at 25% at idle. We'll see what that number does once we come off of the initial startup high idle speed. But just to give you a perspective here with this calculated load value, um, when you look at that number and you see it and you say 22%, you might be thinking, well, 
you know, I'm driving the car, it's under some kind of a load, but you can see it idle. Just at idle itself, we're around 20%. So our, our freeze frame data showed us 25% on the calculated load. And uh, what that means to me again, is we have a low speed, uh, light throttle, if any, lean condition, which matches a vacuum leak for sure, for sure. Okay, we can actually stay in the global mode from this point on. Uh, what I'm going to do is customize this so we can look at our trims and our oxygen sensors. Look at those long, long-term fuel trim numbers. Um, it feels like a vacuum leak too. It's real rough, kind of lopy. Um, I don't like the long term on bank two is at zero. Can you guys, you guys can see that right there. I'm looking at that data pit. And that's probably from a fault code that's being set. Uh, Ford will do that. When one side oxygen sensor sets a fault, it will actually use the other bank for its fuel trim control. So just look at these for a second. What I want is my upstreams. So looking at these two guys here, uh, if I graph them, and I can't see my, all right, now both banks are showing 25% on the long term and the short term is real high. Um, let's, um, let's do this first. I'm, I'm gonna ungraph these so that's not distracting. Where, where we wanna focus right now is the long-term and short-term numbers. So watch these two guys here, and then watch these two guys, and I'm just going to raise the RPM. That's all I'm gonna do. What we wanna know is does this improve? Do our numbers improve, or do they get worse? Okay, we have some, some issues here with this long term on bank two. There's, there's some deactivation by the engine computer on that bank when you see a zero like that and it's associated with the code. So what I want you guys to do right now is I want you to focus on bank one only. So just look at this guy here and look at this guy here, the short term and long term on bank one, okay? And you can see at idle, 25% long term is maxed out on bank one and my short term on bank one you can see is counting up as well and that's really the number that tells me that my long term is at its max the fact that the short term has also climbed for those of you that need some help with fuel trim i'll post a link for uh, a video i did a few years ago it's called understanding short term and long term fuel trim i'll put that link in the description of this video as well but let's watch this i'm going to raise the rpm Does it get better or worse is the question. See how much better these numbers got? Short term came into a normal range. Long term is coming down. We are in fuel control on bank one. Here's your bank 102. We can look at that at the same time. It's not a great looking oxygen sensor signal, but at the same time, definitely have improvements here. There's a number of things that can make an oxygen sensor not look good. It's not just the sensor itself. Any type of running problem, misfires, vacuum leaks, uh, leaking injectors, you name it, uh, can make an oxygen sensor signal uh, be affected. In other words, not nice and clean like all the teachers draw the picture. It's not always like that. You see how lean that O2 is right now. Computer's adding fuel, adding fuel, adding fuel. If you watch the short term, that's what's going on. Still adding, still adding, still adding. Now, finally, the O2 came rich. Did not mean to maximize that. Get out of there. Can't see my little, there we go. You saw down here, no. Oh. 
you see it uh the short term down here around frame 490 is right about where the o2 started to become active and now we see the o2 moving up and down we see the short term correcting we have a vacuum leak for sure bank one now bank two is a different issue bank two bank two bank two let's focus on the bank two sensor one oxygen sensor that thing's totally dead there's the long term on bank two and then the short term on bank two so we are maxed ah, look at that though some interesting data here short term fuel trim on bank two is moving up and down suggesting that uh, the oxygen sensor is moving back and forth across stoichiometric like it should be um, but if you look at the bank two sensor one oxygen sensor it's dead there's nothing there all right so my next question is can i make that sensor react yes i can so right now that sensor is functioning and let's see what the computer's doing here for a second long term went to zero on that snap See up, that's kind of strange. Short term's climbing now on that bank. It's like it's it's now trying to richen this oxygen sensor signal. We're up to 50%. 55, 57. O2 sensor still has not reacted. I am not sure why the long term is not coming into play here. I can make the O2 react. This is a fault code initiated sequence we're looking at right here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, I'm going to clear the data. Should I clear it yet? Do I have those codes recorded? I do. You guys saw them. I don't need to save them here because I have it on film. Should I go back to factory mode? Stay in global? We'll stay in global. For you guys that have global OBD2 scan tools, that probably would be more helpful if I did that. And so what I want to do here is let's uh, shut the car off and I'm going to clear emission related data. And now let's go back in and see that data parameters that we were just looking at. This is my upstream right here, bank two. That's the one I'm worried about. See the bank one already became active and this bank two uh, is still lean. Let's look at short terms on both. We're counting up on both banks. Long term went right back to 25%. Uh, you know what I didn't do guys? I forgot on Fords. Um, I didn't reset the keep alive memory. So I didn't wipe out the fuel trim memory whenever I cleared the fault codes. So that's a factor there as well. So what I need to do, this is, this is gonna be difficult for you guys to follow this screen, I think. But what I need to do is I need to uh, go in and clear the keep alive memory, but I have to go back to the factory mode to do that. My focus right now is on this bank two oxygen sensor. We'll find our vacuum leak here in a minute. Okay, I have to, I don't have a choice. I wanna reset my keep alive memory to show you guys something here. So I'm gonna switch vehicles again. This is a 2005 Ford Taurus, by the way. I'm not sure that I mentioned that at the beginning. What I want to do under my functional test is reset my keep alive memory. I need the engine off to do it. So 
So what you guys can do if you don't have a scan tool that'll reset the keep alive memory is you can take the, the battery terminals off of the, of the car and then you can touch them together and what that does is a uh, capacitor discharge in the computer. So the, the memory capacitors in the computer, uh, when you touch the positive and negative leads together of the battery, uh, it will discharge those and it'll wipe out the memory right away. Otherwise, you have to wait for a long period of time. Now, a suggestion on that, I've heard some of the European cars are using some type of backup battery. And so doing a cap discharge like I just described, where you're disconnecting the terminals off of the battery and then you're touching them together, would not be a very wise idea on one of those cars. So what you could do is you could take, um, really you don't need to take both battery terminals off. Take the negative terminal off and then and then what you can use is an incandescent test light I got this little battery charger it's annoying me um, stop making that sound anyway you can use an incandescent test light between the negative terminal that you disconnected and the positive and so your test light bulb would be your buffer just in case there is a backup battery and that incandescent bulb of that test light would be enough to discharge those capacitors. So let me say it one more time. What you do to do a capacitor discharge is you take the negative terminal off. So you have the battery terminal in your hand. Connect the alligator clip of your test light to the disconnected negative terminal. Take the pointer end of your test light down to the positive. So your test light is then in series between the disconnected negative cable and the positive post, and that will do a cap discharge the safe way on those vehicles that have those backup batteries. Now, if you have a backup battery, that's not going to work, but you won't at least hurt the backup battery. That's the point of the test light. So uh, that was a tip from one of you guys. One of my subscribers actually had mentioned uh, doing that, and I adopted that as my own. So whoever that was, it was a long time ago, that suggested doing it that way, thank you for that. You know who you are, thank you. I wish I had your name, I would thank you personally. Great tip. Okay, so my, re my uh, Keep Alive memory is reset. So uh, now when we go into this, we're gonna go factory mode now. I mean, I could back up and go global, but uh, it's really not necessary. You guys can do the same thing with a, a global scan tool. And let's customize this one. Well, let's watch it in digital mode. Short terms counting up. Long terms are both at zero now. Long terms are starting to count up as well. Both O2s are active. So we still have not been able to prove what is going on with that rich code. That'd be my top oxygen sensor, this bank two sensor one. You see the computers changing the, the trim strategy, the long term's dropping out, going to zero on both banks at the same time. And that's just part of the, the code setting, the code storage. It's part of the computer system checking itself on these oxygen sensors. No question about it. Let's focus on these oxygen sensors now. So bank one, let's look at this guy. That's my upstream on bank one. My upstream on bank two is down here, bottom left.
trying to prove an O2 fault on bank two. That's all I'm doing right now. having some difficulty. I, I have to admit to you guys, before I turn the camera on, I, I started the car and I saw what I needed to see on this bank two oxygen sensor. It, it was not reacting, it was not responding uh, at first. And uh, that's just the nature of oxygen sensors sometimes is trying to catch it when it acts up. You know, both O2s right now are, are really lean because we have a vacuum leak. Let's, uh, let's leave this alone for a minute. Let's go under the hood, find the vacuum leak, and maybe we can make this so too take a crap for us on camera uh, and then uh, be able to wrap this thing up. So let's go under the hood. All right, you guys know me. Uh, I love the water test for vacuum leaks. You guys that have not seen the water test, I'll put a couple of video links in the description of this one where you can watch where I'm doing this. So all you're gonna do, uh, looking at the intake manifold, get yourself a squirt bottle, and um, it is the, the safest way to, to locate a vacuum leak without a smoke machine. Me being outside and not being near uh, an airline where I can hook up my smoke machine, this is the way I'm doing it. So just go over the intake, around the injectors. What you're listening for is for that water to get sucked in, around the um, idle air control valve, the throttle body, uh, the PCV hoses, Back of the intake PCV valve is here. There it is, right there. Right there. All right, let me put my mic next to it. I'll get the camera over here too in a minute. Actually, let's do them both. I actually had this question from one of you guys on a recent video and I didn't get a chance to reply. Uh, but the question was, well, what are you listening for? Well, listen. So that's it. Well, I hope my arm was out of the way on that shot in case it was in the way. It's right here on this manifold tuning valve. There's probably some kind of O-ring or something around that tuning valve. So it sits on the back of the intake and I haven't seen one like that. So I'm pretty confident that this device, because Ford has used them forever, is some type of a manifold tuning valve. And uh, that's exactly where my leak is. So I want to uh, take a second and, and talk to you guys about something. I, uh, I need you guys to know that, that I read every single one of your comments. I'm sorry that I, I have to keep my glasses on. I can't see at all. Sorry about that. Um, every single one of your comments on this channel, I read every single one. All 80,000 of you guys. And unfortunately, I just can't answer most of them. And so I want you guys to know, again, that I have created a forum on my website, it's on scannerdander.com, where you guys can post your questions and I have a community of people that are helping me answer your questions. And uh, I would like you guys to be part of this community too and share your information with us so we can all learn from each other. Uh, there is a sign up process when you sign up for the forum there is a 24-hour wait period where you'll get a confirmation email and you'll be able to follow that link and then you'll be able to get on uh, my forum and the reason that is there is to prevent um, people from hacking it and prevent uh, spam so we, we, we keep the community uh, very friendly there is no uh, back and forth banter between people and uh, if that's even the right word so good at English and uh, it is a forum that I will not tolerate assholes okay plain and simple so if you want to be part of that 
I want you to be there too. Post your questions there, please. You can post them under the videos too. Sometimes I answer them, but guys, listen, when you have 80,000 people asking you questions and then also emailing you and, and then you have uh, social media, Facebook and Twitter and, and uh, Instant Messenger and, and people are, are bombarding me with questions, I just can't, I can't do it anymore. So that's what I've done, I've created that. Uh, again, it's www.scannerdanner.com and my forum is there, you'll find it. And uh, I hope to see you guys there. But as far as the water test goes, it's safe, it's accurate. And if you have any questions about it, post over there. And also look in the description of this video, I'll put some links for other videos that I've done doing the same stuff. So we have a vacuum leak there that needs to be repaired. And then we also have an oxygen sensor fault that I'm trying to prove to you guys. I'm not sure that I'll be able to, but I'm gonna try. So let's do that and then we'll, we'll make the call on this car. Okay guys, what do we got going on here? Let's see. Bank two sensor one's moving. Bank one sensor one is fixed rich. How weird is that? Uh, let's see if that's accurate. It is too. Look at the, when you have a rich upstream O2 and then you have a rich downstream on the same bank, you know, we can be confident that our, our oxygen sensor is reading properly. Now why is bank one rich? Bank one is rich with 25%. Yeah, that's weird that the short term isn't trying to correct for that. Another thing you can do to check for accuracy, uh, you see how I can drive that bank one sensor one. I drove it lean by snapping it. I think what we have going on here is the computers using the other bank at times I may not uh, tell Pete to put an oxygen sensor in this. I might might tell him just let's fix this vacuum leak first and then see what we got after that. Yeah, look at fuel trim on bank one down at 2%, 45% on the short term. I mean, I know I have a, a lean condition for sure. Let's just watch this for a minute. O2s are both moving, reacting. You know, that rich one we had a minute ago on this one in the center of the screen um, it, uh, it reacted immediately whenever I snapped the throttle. So now we're full lean. Nope. See how the long term on bank one is down around 2%. I wonder what fault codes we have. I need to check real quick. Pretty sure that that one set might be a pending code. Nope. Nope. So we could do a, a, uh, a key on engine run self test, but that's just where the computer is going to do basically what we're doing monitoring the o O2s and idle control and, and some other things it can't do. Um, without taking the car for a drive. That rich exhaust fault on that bank two, I'm just going to tell them to put an oxygen sensor in it on bank two, be done with it. I saw it guys, I'm telling you, and I, I didn't catch it on, on screen. I was actually using a different scan tool when I started. I was going to show you guys a, a, a new scan tool that was uh, sent to me. It was actually an OTC Encore 
and you guys will see that soon. I'll use it at some point. But I couldn't, with the bright sun and everything going on, I couldn't use that and, and do this, this, uh, this case study. So I, I chose not to use that scan tool. But when I had it connected, I first started the car, that bank uh, two oxygen sensor uh, died on me momentarily for the first 10 or 15 seconds of, uh, of uh, running. I'm sorry, once it went into closed loop is when that sensor died, but it wasn't uh, uh, fully warmed up, I guess you could say. The car wasn't. The oxygen sensor would have been. Um, That's what I want right there. Those look pretty good right now. Hey Pete, you got a vacuum leak, but I'm, you're, we're still rolling here on the camera, but uh, right around the manifold tuning valve. But um, I also had an, an oxygen sensor on bank two that did not look good when I first started the car. Right. I want you to put an oxygen sensor in this too for bank two. Bank two yeah, I'll, I'll show you in a second. What's the mileage on this thing? Uh, I can't, can't get the mileage with the door open. I'd like to prove that this sensor is crapping out. Hey, Pete. Hang on, let me show Pete real quick where this leaks at. Manifold tuning valve. I don't know if it's the if there's a gasket or if that housing's cracked. Without unbolting it and, and pulling it off, I don't know. I well, guess the intake itself cracked. I don't know. It's not the intake that's cracked because if, if I direct it around yeah, that, yeah, I'm saying right here it could be. Well, it could be. I mean, I don't, I don't. Without pulling that manifold tuning valve off, there's no way to know. Could just be a gasket. Around. Could just be an O-ring that's around that that just needs to be replaced. But bank two, let's see, where is bank two on Fords? Is it front or back? Is it? I don't know why I know. How do you know? You never know that. One, three, and five are, no, in, the, no, no, are no. in the back? No, but if you see. Oh, yeah, the cylinder the head. The cover? Yes. The, right, the head. Yeah, got gotcha. you. All right. So bank two would be. Right there. That sensor right next to the right, okay. rad fan. I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have you put that sensor in too because I had a fault code. Pete for a Ritz exhaust. Uh -huh. At the same time, we had a lean exhaust fault. The lean exhaust fault is our vacuum yeah. leak, but the Ritz fault would have been that bank two oxygen. oxygen sensor. Although, you know, honestly, it's possible that that fault code set from, from the way the computer balances out the fuel I know system. When I first checked it before they took it, it just it was a lean system code. No, I mean, yeah, then maybe we don't do the O2, Pete. Let's. Right. Well, tell here's the thing. That's right. I like that better. Right. Uh, fix this right. vacuum leak. We'll clear the fault codes. Give it back to the customer. Let him drive it. If it comes back with the bank too rich fault code that he had, he needs that oxygen sensor. Okay. How's that sound? We have bank one going full rich right now. Just some weird fuel trim control on this thing and the way that it reacts it's almost like that sensor is being ignored right now because it is being ignored look at the look at the fuel trims they're moving in identical numbers right now so what's going on all of our fuel control is actually being based off of the bank two sensor one oxygen sensor. I've seen it. Um, I have some videos on it. Again, description of this one. I'll find that one I'm talking about where it's very specific 
and you're looking at a, uh, a rich, sorry, you're looking at fuel control from a dead O2 on one side being applied uh, to that dead bank from the other side. In fact, that one's on Scanner Dander Premium. So I'll post a link, but uh, you won't be able to watch it unless you're a premium subscriber. But uh, really good info as far as fuel, uh, fuel strategies on Fords and what they're doing. Um, so what, what's going on here and what we're looking at now to explain it, uh, let's see if I can get my long term up here too and you'll see the, the long term long term is the same as well um, what is that um, what's going on is this for whatever reason the strategy that you're looking at here um, that would make the O2 rich that could explain our rich code but our rich code was on bank 2 bank 2 sensor 1 not bank 1 sensor 1 um, but again, what you're looking at would be uh, fuel control being applied from bank two to bank one. And the problem with that is the fuel control is great for bank two right now, um, but it's too much for bank one. So um, that's why the uh, upstream O2 is rich on bank one. The computer is not using the bank one sensor one oxygen sensor right now. I can make it use it again if I can make that thing move. I should be able to. And by making it move, I can just do a snap throttle as you can see. I made it move and now the car's starting to get rough and computer's like, oh wait, you're alive. Let's start making, uh, controlling you now. And that's what you're looking at. Long term went to zero on bank one. I don't quite get that strategy part. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it, uh, and I'm not going to tell them to put an oxygen sensor in this right now. We're, we're just going to go and fix that vacuum leak, and, and um, I think we're going to be fine. O2 is reacting. Don't know why the long term wouldn't count up on bank one. Fords are goofy with their long terms too, man. Sometimes you gotta go drive it for, for long term to come into play. I just put it in gear just to watch it for a minute. an odd strategy that is. Let's move the car. So the long terms jobs keep that short term down near zero. You see it's doing that on bank two. I know you can't see the, the data up top. This is the bank two short term right here. I'll scroll down as you see it. See short term bank two. I wanted you to see the long term too. That's why you can't see the top of that. See how the short term on bank one is around 20%. When the long term would learn on bank two or bank one down here, it's at zero. That would bring my oxygen sensor signal back Sorry, that would bring my short term on bank one up here back down towards zero like bank two is showing. I'm not sure why it's not doing that. Let's look at the amplitude of these sensors. What's up, Pete? I'm almost done. See the bank two sensor one oxygen sensor is less less frequent. Uh, where's that smoke coming from? Oh, that was a car pulling in the parking lot. Yeah. 
let's reset our min-max here. Did that reset the min-max? No. Do it manually. Millivolts, so we gotta go a thousand. Just getting my scales set so we can compare this a little bit better. Bank to bank. Frequency and amplitude of the O2. See the bank two sensor is not as clean. It's not as frequent. I am probably changing my mind as I'm looking at this data as far as telling Pete to put an oxygen sensor on bank two. The long-term trim issue on bank one and why it's not correcting, I don't care. It's a Ford. I'm sitting still. That's the way they react. So now the question for us is, is our vacuum leak that we have uh, affecting this oxygen sensor signal in that it looks different from bank one or is it a deteriorating sensor? It could be either or. See, as I lower my RPM, how much leaner it's getting. We can look at the short term counting up for that. For that What's that? I have an O ring, but I think I had a head gasket set for one. Okay. Year. I had to go look. Don't touch anything yet, buddy. Stupid Ford. I want to see that long-term strategy change, but I can't force it to. That's why the short term is so much uh, richer on bank one. I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, some of these oxygen sensor fault codes that, that you run into, it's one of the few times you can change a part. Um, when you have a slow response oxygen sensor fault code, for example, as long as you don't have any exhaust leaks or anything like that, uh, I have no problem putting a sensor in when I see that. I also don't have a problem putting a sensor in when I see a lean fault accompanied with a rich fault. It's kind of a, a thing where the, the uh, O2 is dead for a period of time and and uh, then comes back to life and, and in the process of the computer trying to correct for the dead one and then you flag fault codes like that. So um, 
if, if I'm in the field and I'm working on this car, I'm putting a sensor in it because I don't want this car to come back. You know, cu some customers don't understand uh, the, the whole process. Uh, for Pete and working for him, no problem. We can fix the vacuum leak, clear the faults, let him take it, try to save the customer some money. His customers are, are very loyal to him, come back all the time, and, and uh, that's, the, that's the approach we'll probably take here just to... Uh, to save them a little money, but my suspicions are this is gonna come back with a rich O2 fault uh, on, on bank two like we saw. So that's it, I'm, I'm done with this one for now. Um, again, I want to uh, remind you guys that uh, the forum, if you have any questions, and uh, don't forget that uh, the description of this video and all the videos that I'm doing, I'm posting related videos in the description section of the video as well as tools too. If you guys are interested in the tools I'm using, um, there, you'll find links for tools in the description as well. And uh, what else is in there? Um, just symptoms, cause, fix, you know, all that stuff I list for the videos now. And I'm working on my older ones too to get those updated. So um, again, I appreciate you guys being here with me. I appreciate you, uh, uh, your support and all that you guys do for me which is uh, allow me to bring content to you like this. Um, I'm actually, here, I'll, I'll, I'll use this opportunity to uh, talk about where I'm at right now. Um, I uh, am actually working at the college part-time now. Uh, this, this stuff takes a ton of time to do. Um, ask any YouTube creator about the time involved and, uh, and they'll tell you. So six months out of the year, I'm teaching at the school and six months out of the year um, I'm working from home and doing this stuff and uh, it, my rotation right now is uh, two months on and two months off two months on two months off so each uh, every other term um, at the school and for those of you that don't know it's Rosedale Technical College and um, so yeah I'm thanking you guys for uh, allowing me to do this allowing me to um, uh, do my own thing and, and be my own boss is an awesome thing and then also I want to remind you guys that are my students that I'm not going anywhere. Rosedale is my home. Uh, I love to teach and I love you guys. So um, and if any of you are interested in, in the college, uh, I'll put a link to the college in, in here as well. And you guys, can, uh, you guys can check us out. We're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, you know, I can't say enough good things about Rosedale. I've been there for 16 years and um, I have no plans on, on leaving anytime soon. It is my home again, and it's where I started everything. It's where I started all of this, so i um, grateful for that. And I'm grateful for you guys. Uh, I, will, I will see you next time. Thank you.